Uh, it's been a while since we've had this guy on. He's uh, he's a big timer now. He's he's a huge star, huge celebrity producer. I think extraordinaire is, is what we can officially call him now. You know him, you love him. He is one of the co-hosts of your one of the fan favorites, Big Swing Podcast. Even though our boy Mr. Chicken Strip isn't a Dodger anymore, he's always a Dodger in our heart. But long time friend of the show, Mr. Cooper Searles. What is going on, buddy? Look at that. He's on the What's screen. Going on, guys. And I, th- I think you're stuck on the screen side, but people should be able to hear you. I'll keep fixing that. But uh, yeah, man. How am I looking? How am I looking? I mean, you're looking. You're, you're around, but <laughs> you're, you're around. The still shot is the still shot. <laughs> there you enough? No, it wasn't. It wasn't good. But now you're fixed. <laughs> it's cool because we're running this as a guest thing. But it says your name. People know your face, Cooper. Uh, man, now now you're officially known as like a big time podcast producer. What up with that? Well, you know, when you look in my Twitter bio now, it's going to have a lot of dashes. You know, there's just so many different titles that You're I have now. Guys, um, right. It's just kind of like, you know, similar to you guys with uh, burger models, podcasters, bloggers. Um, so, yeah, shout out to you guys. Eat fresh. We're finally getting the, re- the recognition that we deserve, man. About time. <laughs> yeah, damn People straight. need to know that we are so talented. We have so many things going on right now. Yeah, it's, it's super, super hard to hold a burger in your hand and take a picture. <laughs> yeah. I had to hold it in a glove. You know how difficult that is to not squish a burger in your glove? I have I mean, I've never done that until now, though. So <laughs> yeah, I don't well, think anybody knows that. And that, that was not the only picture. We we did a whole photo shoot that day. So one of these days, we got to drop all of the uh, <laughs> behind the scenes. Cold Jack in the Box. <laughs> yeah, we ate those burgers afterwards. I got them like three hours before. Great day. Beautiful day. But mm. we're here to talk about something important, man. Uh, of course, Um you, you guys still have the big swing and all that. Uh, it's still going to be big time stars doing that. Hopefully this year or, or sometime soon we can get out and, and get another uh, live big swing because that was fun, I know, for everybody. But Goats on the Bump starring your friend, Mr. Ross Stripling, and <laughs> some of the best, the biggest names active in the game. Tell people about this new podcast that, uh, you know, just how it came together and and your involvement and and just uh you know how much fun it's been putting together with uh with ross yeah no it's been great man we we partnered up with james street media the same company that does all the production and editing and stuff for the big swing and we just kind of were trying to think of a new concept and uh you know we realized hey look at the network that we've been able to have from the pitching side on the big swing and like how can we parlay that into something unique and uh, we just didn't really see anything like that out there. Yeah. And like when when you hear Sandy Koufax being talked about by Clayton Kershaw, it's like, wow, like that's a that's a big that's a big first episode that came out. And you know, we have guys like, you know, for Dodgers fans listening, Trevor Bauer has an episode, Walker Bueller, a bunch of other big time pitchers along mm-hmm. with media people. So um, yeah, we we've recorded all of them. Uh, we're gonna be putting them out weekly. And um, I think there's I, don't know, I think there's maybe 10 of them that we're doing, but um, yeah, it's it's a really awesome show. I think, you know, Ross did such a great job on it and uh, on and we did a lot of research to, to make sure that he was prepared and everything. And so we're really proud of it. And I, I think, you know, baseball fans alike and, and Dodger fans, at least for this first episode, are going to really enjoy it. Yeah, I mean, you hooked a big one in your first episode with Clayton Kershaw. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think that's about as big as you can go to start off a podcast. Usually, I think uh, our type of podcast, we were getting like the, uh, I don't know, like Dodger Stadium photographer or something outside to start. <laughs> I don't off. know. That would be pretty damn good to get John Suhu. No, on no, here. Not, not. I meant like a fan photographer. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta get like yeah. Eddie Espinosa or something like yeah. that. Some nobody, but <laughs> just yeah. the guy taking a selfie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah, you know, you not only is Kirsch with you know all about uh, whatever twenty eighteen. And it'll all star Ross Stripling, but they're talking about one of the the greatest to ever do it in Sandy Koufax. And oh, add to that, these dudes have firsthand knowledge of him right. for all of their career. Yep. So it's it was just great. And we know, I mean, uh, obviously this is something that's been being put together for quite some time. So I think at the time you guys recorded all that stuff, Ross was still uh, a boy in blue. Now he's a boy yeah. in a different shade of blue, but. Uh, <laughs> All right, I know yeah. coming into – oh, yeah, we kind of just yeah, touch just on that. Say, yeah, it's, it's like you, you mentioned, you know, them being being around Sandy. Like what – you know, there's there's probably been no left-handed pitcher that's been around Sandy Koufax more than Clayton Kershaw has right. in a Dodgers jersey. And, you know, there's been a lot of people that have come in through that organization that have been awesome, but Kershaw's obviously a legend, and, and he's been around him as much as anyone. So, yeah, I mean, he had – 
perspective on his game and like his style and also just like inside stories about his interactions with with sandy so yeah it's good as it gets there I, hopefully we don't peak at that one yeah <laughs> i mean that's that's a strong way to start you came out swinging for the fences on that one but i mean we have been around the i mean we've been dodger fans our entire life so it's a little different for us but i mean you're hearing stories from clayton kershaw about sandy koufax that you just don't hear like mm -hmm. you don't find these things out from media you don't find these things no. out through journalists just interacting with players you don't find this out anywhere until you have a conversation with a player like clayton kershaw and you're like oh my gosh i never knew this much stuff about uh, sandy Ko like even when he was just you know, in that, I don't want to spoil it for anybody who hasn't listened yet, but you're talking about guys like you, they're talking about his fingers and like how he grips a baseball. Yeah. And I'm like, these are things that I've never talked about or considered with anybody where they're, where Clayton's mm -hmm. just like, I can't do that, Sandy. Like, yeah. I, I, I don't yeah. have hands yeah. like that. I have like, normal people hands. You freak. Yeah. <laughs> or, or even just like the, uh, the part I found the coolest was just the, you know, interaction between them two as far as like how Sandy approaches talking to Clayton and not like overstepping himself and, uh, you know, I'm not going to mention names, but there's there's a lot of people that I've heard Ross or other people talk about, you know, with that are in the organization that, you know, seem to overstep sometimes and, right. you know, didn't really know where that line stood. But so I thought it was kind of cool that, that Sandy Koufax, like, you know, provided his knowledge and wisdom, but like, you know, it was like, hey, this is their time, which is cool. Yeah, that that that's definitely huge. I wanted to take a step back because I know you you when you got into the podcast game with, you know, a current big leaguer, and uh, you didn't really go into it as a baseball fan. So now you you flash forward a couple years later. I'm assuming that the baseball fandom has grown for you. But let's just you know give a pitch here for goats on the bump and and uh, you know how would this really dr uh, bring in let's say the casual baseball fan or maybe people that aren't as, as uh, you know, hugely into baseball, like what did it do for you sitting in that room hearing these guys talk about it? Or even if you weren't in the room, you know, just listening to the conversation afterwards during the edit and all that, you know, how did that kind of spark you? Like, like, holy crap, this is, this is pretty damn cool. Yeah. I think the two things for me that, that I love, and I think a lot of people love today is like making comparisons and just history. Like I love those two things. Like we love debating about like, Hey, would Michael Jordan be as good in, in this era or all that type of stuff, you know, like Clayton brought that up, but we love making comparisons in mm -hmm. sports and we're constantly doing that with, you know, Sandy to Clayton and all these other guys that we did. And then just like, I'm, I'm a history nut in anything, whether it be wars or baseball or anything. So uh, to hear like kind of the history of the sport told by the greatest players in today's game yeah. is really unique. And, you know, to have Ross's network and have access to these current great big leaguers and have them like provide perspective on the players that made them fall in love with the game is, is really neat. So yeah, just from like a history standpoint and being able to compare eras and stuff is just uh, intriguing. I think for, for anyone, even if you're not a huge baseball guy. I think a big talking point in that one was, uh, I believe it was Clayton who was basically like, I think that Sandy would pitch really well during even today's game, yeah. which is, you know, you talk about the Jordan argument, that's something that people always want to talk about all the time, but you go back even further, like Sandy was way further behind than Jordan was, and you're like looking at that, and you're like, oh yeah, he could have pitched in today's game, and it's mm -hmm. like, oh, this is a yeah. way different game, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I think I yeah. liked one of the things that, that uh, I don't know if it was Kirsch or, or, or Ross brought up, but how... Sandy wanted to be a basketball player when he was growing up. Like that was his first love. And then you look at the the you know the the damn uh, baseball card on the back of his baseball card. You look at the numbers at first. It's like, oh yeah, this dude did not grow up playing baseball at all. Right. Yeah. They had no idea where the ball was going. So a lot of the cool inside stories, like like you mentioned, Coop. You got you got Bueller coming up, and uh, yeah, I don't know how much you're you're able to spoil. Uh, what are we? Uh, what is uh, Walker Bueller? Who who is he talking about? So just another small, fiery guy, Pedro Martinez. Oh, that's and it. <laughs> so that's going to be really cool. Like we kind of what we how we approached this honestly was, uh, you know, we had we had people in mind. Like obviously when we we thought about Sandy Koufax, the first guy we thought about was Kirsch. But like for someone like Walker, we reached out to him and said, "Who's a guy that's fascinated you? Who would you be fired up to talk about?" And that's really how we got a lot of the combinations. Mm -hmm. So oh. uh, that's I think that's what also made it really cool is we just didn't like say, hey, this is what we're talking about. Yeah. We actually like 
allowed them to pick and, and mm -hmm. it made them more interested in the topic for sure. Speaking of somebody who hosts podcasts myself, uh, it's, it's definitely cooler <laughs> to let the person who's going to be on your show pick the topic because that's going to be something that they're actually going to want to talk about. So that's pretty cool. I like how that works okay, so, out. Okay, so with that being said, I, I have something that I wanted to ask you all talking about picking the topics. Mm. Uh -huh. I have to... Um, I'm the wedding officiant for the first time at a wedding coming up in about two weeks. And there's going to be about 200 people. Um, and I am extremely nervous. Do you have any advice? Ooh. Get drunk. <laughs> yes. Get just black out. You know, well, I've never. It's not, it's I've not never... the bachelor. It's not the, <laughs> no. the best man speech. It's yeah. the officiant. I got to have my shit. Well, <laughs> listen, I've never seen an officiant just kind of get blackout drunk. Yeah. So, I mean, every, there's got to be a first for everything. Think right? of that story. It'd be like, yeah, our guy, dude, he was just. Yeah. Don't look at anybody except the people that you're marrying. Don't look at anybody else. Just look uh, look yeah. them dead in the eyes and don't Just, look past. I don't know. My my advice at uh, Cool Whip Special here says uh, don't, don't mess, mess up. up. So uh, there you go. There's some there's some primo sound advice. advice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they picked you for a reason. That means they probably like you as a human people. So just be yourself. Listen uh, listen to the great words of. Robin Williams through the genie in Aladdin, then be yourself, and you'll be good. Does he say that? Yes. Such a long way around. Yeah, that was really yeah, long Were you even born for that Maybe I quote the Aladdin um, it, whenever, before they get married, and say, just be yourselves. There you <laughs> go. Quote the Aladdin. And they'll yeah. be like, did he and, just quote Aladdin? Like <laughs> yeah. Or or you do is you you like you bring out a laptop and you, you go to a clip on YouTube. Because you know how much people love when you're like, hold on, guys, you need to watch this. <laughs> yeah. Now, imagine how great it would be at a wedding. <laughs> Definitely Connect to the up. Wi-Fi. Make sure that we got the router working just fine. <laughs> Bless. I need, I need yeah, Ethernet, I please. Work. Can we get Ethernet here? Does anybody have an adapt? Do you have a dongle? Yeah, I need it. Yeah. just you know, just throwing in like crash golf, it. throwing in golf terms. I'm sure that'll play up real yeah. big in front of a wedding crowd. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Either Maybe, don't yeah. either don't stand out or stand out massively, where they're going <laughs> to talk about you for decades. And yeah, man, that's know. a it's a good call. I think. <laughs> I think if you're going to stand out, you stand out early and then just come home with really nice and easy and, and let the memory be about the I do. Yeah, for go. sure. And Anthony yeah. here says, remember to breathe and don't mess up anyone's name. I would also say that's pretty oh. good. That's a big one. I've been to a few where they uh, <laughs> said the entirely wrong name for the person. And I was like, that's not his name. It's that's, like, that's it's a like good line, start. line. I think he's at the wrong wedding. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, would be tough. Yeah, I'm, uh, my my brother-in-law, he, he married my wife and I. And so I have his notes. And so I'm, I'm working off of his notes a lot, but I am like telling myself over and over, change, change the, names. the names. Yeah, yeah. Cooper. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, yeah. Cooper? Wait, Do you, Cooper. Wait. Looks at it on his head. Do you <laughs> transcribes it that way? Oh God, guys, yeah. guys, this is uh, this isn't the type of stuff you get on Goats on the Bump, but uh, you know <laughs> you can also get better. this kind of stuff once we finally figure out our new. Uh, uh, Pacifico sponsored uh, crossover between uh, the Blue Swing, I guess it would be called, and we also have Blue Chew as a sponsor, <laughs> perhaps. But uh, Coop, it's always good to talk to you, man. Hopefully, we get to uh, uh, one of these days again, crush many beers and and go play some terrible golf. Um, don't forget to breathe and don't forget to uh, not mess up the edits because people are going to enjoy this podcast, man. All right, guys, I appreciate y'all having me on. Can't wait to get out there sometime. Yeah, I'd love to play some golf, drink some Pacificos, and make some bad choices. <laughs> it's all we do around here. Damn it's straight. all we do. Cooper Searles, your co-host of the Big Swing Podcast with his friend, Mr. Ross Stripling, and, of course, producer behind Goats on the Bump, hosted by Ross Stripling. Thanks again, bud. All right, guys. Take it easy. All right.